Hi, I'm Antoine Brown. And I'm Jeanette Brown. And we are from Ephesus, Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Saginaw, Michigan. And this is week two of Handle with Care. Um, we definitely want to give a shout out to the forwards from our sister church in Flint who handled week one and they did an excellent job. It's going to be hard to follow them. But yeah. this week we are going to focus on we're going to focus on Black love in honor of Black History Month. So the next two weeks, we'll uh, speak with some married couples that we are friends with and focus on Black love. And that is right, ladies. Black wives matter. Black wives matter. That is a fact. So what we're going to do, uh, we're, going to have, we're going to have some fun. Um, but we do want to introduce ourselves as a couple. For those that don't know us, um, uh, we're going to let Jeanette start. So Antoine was over his cousin's house and his cousin was dating my friend. I rode with my friend over to his cousin's house, saw Antoine outside. I guess he saw me sitting in the car because I never got out the car and asked for my number and it kind of went from there. Yeah, that was back when we had house phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a house phone number. So um, from there, we dated kind of off and on for a while. Um, the, the one part of the story that's funny is we live right around the corner from each other and our fathers knew each other, but we didn't know each other. I bet we stayed, if I count the blocks, three blocks away in little short blocks and never knew each other. But we dated off and on, um, went to the prime together, um, then college came, right? So I went to college local. I went to Grand Valley State in Grand Rapids. Yeah, and I went to Saginaw Valley State, so that's the, the enemy. But so we separated, right? We were still a couple, but it was long distance. And back then, he probably probably had some offs and ons or you know whatever. But then eventually, Jeanette came back home, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we were home and still together. Then we have a blended family, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I have, um, well, we have two daughters. Um, Taylor, she's in the Navy, and she's. Um, I want to say uh, 27, I believe. 28. 28. Okay, so Taylor's 28. Um, and then we also have um, Brianna, who's 27, Seven. right? And they are part of the blended family with us. And then we have Kayla, who is 24, and she is in clinicals right now at Saginaw Valley State University. She graduated from CMU with her bachelor's in biomedical science. And then we have our youngest daughter, Cameron, who is currently attending Central Michigan University. So we are almost empty nesters. Yep, almost. So um, just to follow up on that, so um, we got married in 19... 98. Eight. I was going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got married in 1998. So we've been married for 22 years. And so, you know, these videos of this um, that we're going to show and what we're going to do today is going to touch on a couple things. And then we are going to follow up with some things in our life that we went through and talk about that and lead you guys into later on this evening. Anything else before we start? Yeah, um, we dated six years before oh, yeah. we getting married. So we've been together for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, 1992. So mm -hmm. 29 years. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. So you're going to hear some of the good and some of the bad today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to lead you guys into one of our first videos. Um, and this video talks about some of the, some of the biggest challenges um, as married couples. And so we're going to lead into that video right now. The biggest challenges, I believe, for relationships today is uh, how, how we define what love is and how we define what a healthy marriage is and um, what we use to make that definition. I think that in our society and in, in Western culture, we have a lot of other things that really don't matter as much that we've allowed to matter a lot. The work status and, you know, the, the size of the uh, marriage or the wedding ceremony and where we went for a honeymoon. Was it a location wedding and uh, how many carrots in that ring? And uh, some of those things that we put so much emphasis on. People are paying 
uh, an average of $30,000 for a wedding ceremony and uh, not spending nearly that much or spending that much time focused on the relationship. So we have to kind of realign what we believe is healthy. And I believe that a healthy marriage, a healthy relationship is one that follows the order and structure that the Bible sets forth as a healthy marriage. It starts with, the word says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor with the Lord. I believe that's still the truth. And, uh, uh, you know, in the scripture, when it talks about the 10 virgins, the wise and the five wise and the five foolish, I believe that that speaks to a reality today because a God man is looking for uh, the light of the Lord in a godly woman. And so when that light is trimmed and burning, when you're living a life for the Lord, then uh, a man of God is going to see that and be drawn to it. And so that's the beginning of a healthy and loving relationship. So um, just because a couple both are spirit filled and love the Lord, just because they love the Lord does not mean that they are not going to have challenges. Uh, I think there's an old adage that causes people to believe that um, somewhere in the hemisphere or in the universe, there's this one person out there for me and somehow I'm going to find that person either at Walmart or at church. I'm going to come into that person. Well, the reality is I believe that there are a number of people that we could marry. And as long as they are of the same faith, the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked. So God wants us to be of the same faith. And when we are of the same faith and marry, that God will be with us. We're going to have challenges, but he'll be with us through every one of them. All right. So that was a video about um, some of the biggest challenges um, that we face um, as far as um, married couples. Not that we face, but what he talked about. So we do want to say that, you know, we are not marriage counselors, right? We're just giving you advice based on our marriage experience. Correct. So, so for me to talk about some of the challenges that we have, like we got married in 1998. And I think a year or two later, I started working for a general, well, GM or Delphi at the time. And I started working a job on second shift. Right. So Jeanette worked first shift, I don't know, eight to five. I worked second shift, probably something like three to midnight. So we, we didn't really see each other a lot. I mean, we had a small kid. We didn't see each other a lot. So that was really tough on the marriage. Um, sometimes we didn't see each other until it was time to go to church on Sabbath. Right. Yeah. So that was the good part. You know, we still kept church there. We kept God there. And we made sure that no matter what went on through the week, because all we really did was talk on the phone, that we made sure we still showed up every week for church uh, with family and spent as much time as possible together on the weekends. But that was a big challenge in our marriage. We were only married for a couple of years and that was tough. That's one of the reasons I left that job because mm -hmm. I was on second shift and it just was too much on my marriage. I mean, we were, we were not about to get divorced or nothing, you know, but it was just a lot, you know, not better spend time with your new wife. Um, so that was one of the challenges that I can remember that we had that was, um, it was kind of tough. So that was an old challenge we had from, but now the new challenge that we have is this quarantine stuff going on. <laughs> so now, instead of me not seeing him a lot, I see him all day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> I mean, we don't leave the house much because of Corona, but we work at home. So we see each other 24 hours, seven days a week. And that um, was a challenge in itself. So we had to learn how what to communicate more, communicate to, more, to give each other a little space, space so that we aren't in each other's face all day, every day. Yeah. So we were working in the same room. Now I'm working in a different room and he works in a different room. Um, yeah. That was kind of tough, mm -hmm. you know, with our job. Like if she had to talk on the phone, I had to be quiet. You know what I mean? She had to do the same thing for me. We were making faces at each other, like, shut up, I'm trying to talk. His voice was irritating. And my so voice I knew it was loud. time for us to separate yeah. in the room. So we had to separate into different rooms. Plus, it just was new, you know, just being home. Like, you think you know somebody like I think we do. But yeah, I think, do. yeah, but going away to work every day 
and then spending that time apart. And then you come back home and, okay, we're home. We're happy to see each other. So now we have all day to spend with each other in the evening. But going from when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to see you and I'm going to see you all the way tonight. It's tough. No matter how much you love somebody, because I guarantee you I got on Jeanette's nerves. It's a guarantee. Yeah. And got, I'm sure I got on his nerves. Yeah, it's a guarantee. <laughs> yeah. So being quarantined is tough. And I know a lot of people had different challenges with being quarantined and different things that they can do. But um, it's a tough challenge for everybody out there. But I would say if you are experiencing any kind of difficulties in your marriage, seek uh, therapy. Go to someone, your pastor. That That's number one. I would go to a pastor because um, he, the pastor can help you pray. He can help you put God back into your relationship if it's not and give you some advice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that, mm -hmm. right? Because Jeanette talked me into going to the pastor for marriage counseling, all right? So we show up at the church to go to marriage counseling. We talking to the pastor about what's going on. He kind of looked at us like, Pastor Brown was like, get out of my office. Ain't nothing wrong with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he said, y'all just seeing each other too much. Um, but he did give us some, he good, gave some good advice. He though. said we need to have date nights, which we do have now, which help. Yeah, we had date nights. He told us it was a good thing we work in separate rooms. Yeah. And did he give us, he told us something. Uh, he asked us how was our love life. Yeah. He, he asked us, how, he, asked us how, he asked us how many times per week. And I was like, uh, two. And the pastor was like, two? That's it? <laughs> so don't get mad. I mean, Pastor Brown will, but, you know, I've been trying to step that up to five, six. <laughs> okay. All right. What's the next thing? All right. So we go. <laughs> We have another um, short video, just like the first one. We're going to keep them short, um, a video to show you guys. And I will bring that video on now. And then we'll be back to talk a little bit more. So when we're looking at building a uh, healthy and loving marriage, I like to think about the word kiss and the value that that word brings to a loving marriage. On the one hand, it speaks to uh, the contact that a uh, husband and wife make with each other, a face-to-face -face coming together uh, with a level of consistency. And we talked about the three different types of kisses that a couple uh, would experience. One being a friendly kiss, uh, and that's just a quick peck that says, glad you're part of my life. Um, you're someone special to me. Uh, the second is a sensual kiss, and the sensual kiss is a kiss that might be a little longer, a little more passionate. Uh, it says that not only are you someone special, but I have special feelings for you. And then there's the uh, sexual kiss, and the sexual kiss is a goal-oriented kiss, a kiss that says that we are initiating, uh, this is a prelude to a special action that we get to share with each other. And so, we talked about the importance of couples kissing and when they kiss, how it continues to allow a couple to stay connected, uh, even when they're upset with each other. They know that at some point we're going to have to come back together and kiss each other uh, at some point. And so it doesn't allow you to drift too far away from each other, even during the times of anger. It says that I know that I'm going to have to come back and reconnect with you. So that's one type of KISS when we think of KISS. The other thing when we think of KISS is the actual acronym KISS. Years ago, people used to use that acronym to say, keep it simple, stupid. Now, the keep, keep it simple part, uh, I think that's that has a great sentiment to it. The stupid part uh, is kind of harsh. And so I believe what we talk about is keep it simple, sweetheart. And that's a statement to married couples to let's just keep our relationship simple and let's let's not allow it to become complicated and convoluted with uh, everybody else's opinion but let's do love simply the way that God says to do love so one of the first things we talk about in a relationship that is being kept simple is we have to understand what God says love is and God says in uh, 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter he lays out a lot of the specifics about what love actually is. And it's important 
uh, I believe, for couples to get that scripture in their hearts. And so as we do uh, marriage counseling, as we talk to couples, uh, we talk to those couples about learning that chapter together and allowing uh, what God says is love to define how they do love with each other. You know, society teaches a lot of romantic concepts about what love is. But some of the specifics, love is patient and kind and long-suffering. Some of those things are not necessarily as romantic or sexy, but they are ingredients that make for a healthy, loving relationship. All right. So that video was a good video. Talked about kiss. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Um, Keep it simple, sweetheart. First, he called it keep it simple, stupid. Um, but he said sweetheart was a better name to use. Now we're gonna get into the kiss video um tonight at our 7 30 um, um sure. show tonight. Um, but now we're gonna talk a little bit about a little bit some things you can do as far as in the romance department, because I am the best romantic person. No, no comment. Okay. <laughs> So, Antoine, what are some romantic things that couples can do while being quarantined? You got another question? Mm-mm. Oh, um, so it's tough. Um, you try to think of so many things you can do. Um, I looked up stuff on YouTube. I was searching the internet, like, what can you do? Um, you can watch movies together. I know that's easy to do when you're quarantined. Um, you can sneak away sometime during quarantine. We've done that a couple of times. Um, call it a staycation. We can go far. Just put our mask on and went and spent the weekend at a hotel. Yep. Um, that was nice. Um, prepare dinner together at home. Um, what was that? <laughs> nothing. I heard a noise. Oh, nothing. All right. So you can prepare dinner together at home. We haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> But I did, what I do? I did, I set up like a romantic dinner in the dining room. That was nice. But I got the food from Olive Garden. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy delivered it to the door. I, I wanted it to kind of be a secret. And did you hear him knock on the door? Uh-uh. Cause he rung the door, he was knocking on the door. I'm like, man. So Jeanette didn't hear him, she was upstairs. But when I did that, I also set up um, like a spa for Jeanette. Let me see if I can find a picture. I'm gonna show you guys the picture. See if I can get it to work. So that's a picture of it. If you guys can see the picture, um, I went in there. um, I tried to like put the table in the middle. I went to Amazon and found that table. And on that table, um, I set it all up. Massage table. Massage table. I put the little candles around. It's not showing up on the screen there, right? But I put the little candles around and everything. I don't know if you guys can see it. I probably have it wrong. Let me see if I can fix it. That may fix it right there. Anyway, I tried to make it like a real spa. Like she was really getting a massage at a spa, had the music and everything planned. And I think I got a few brownie points for that, right? Yeah, that was nice. I I got a couple, there you go, there go the picture. So I got a few brownie points for that. Um, But it's hard to continue to think of things to do. So I think couples should work together as a team. Uh, Let me stop sharing that. Work together as a team to come up with good ideals on things to do. And you're probably going to run out of ideas, but yeah, but just and you don't even have to spend a lot of money being romantic. Just do things every now and then because I know as female, I females love to have attention. Um, we like to know that our husband is thinking of us, that they actually put some thought into doing something. So, well, that sounds like you're just talking to me right now. You can't I tell am. me something. I okay, I, okay, I figured that's what the case was. So, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, as far as our video this morning, uh, we do want to make sure that you join us tonight at 730. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it tonight. Man, and I already told the pastor that the next board meeting may be about our 730 show tonight. So this may, we may not be back next week. <laughs> I'll let you know in advance. But anyway, it's going to be streaming live, um, um, just like before. I put the, the pages and everything up here for you on the screen. Um, if you're here right now, you'll be able to get to that um, later on. So it shouldn't be a problem at all. I'm having trouble getting everything on the screen, but 
you should be able to go to our YouTube page um, for Fairhaven and Flint, and also our YouTube page for right here in um, in Saginaw, um, right there, Fairhaven Live, and then we have Ephesus Live, and then our Facebook page, of course, um, we got Fairhaven SDA, and we have Ephesus Live, and also, guys, make sure to go to our website and register for tonight. And our website is e sdac.org and Fairhaven's website is fairhavensda.org and you can register. But if you do not register, you can still still come, come to the make sure you PM. make sure you're there. But pretty much for us, that is the end. It is. And remember, wives, black wives matter. We matter. Right. And keep it nice with the kids. Keep it simple, sweetheart. <laughs> simple, sweetheart with the kids. All right, we really enjoyed you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys tonight. Someone says that relationships are like vehicles. And just as our, a vehicle need maintenance, likewise, relationship needs to be maintained. See, when you have a vehicle, you have to make sure that your tire pressure is good. You have to make sure you change your oil every few thousand miles. And if you ignore the maintenance in your vehicle, your vehicle begins to give you signs. It gives you uh, signals like your oil light will come on or your check engine light will begin to flash. And if you ignore these warning signs, uh, eventually your car, your vehicle will fail. And likewise, in a marriage, you need continuous maintenance. And if we continue to ignore the warning signs in our marriage, in our relationship, that relationship will fail. So how important is uh, marriage counseling? You see, the overall goal for marriage counseling is to resolve issues, improve, and also strengthen the relationship between the couple. Is it counseling helps to uncover unseen ways of interacting that may be detrimental in the relationship? Is it marriage counseling offers methods and ways to better handle disputes and problems? And it also helps couples to be proactive in identifying potential problems before they arise. Counseling helps the couple to learn how to resolve conflict in a healthy manner. You will learn how to communicate effectively and efficiently. Because negative communication always destroys the relationship. In the counseling session, you will learn how to be assertive without being offensive. Also, counseling will teach you how to uh, process and work through unresolved issues. But understand that marriage counseling is not a quick fix. It also requires both parties in the marriage to commit to making a positive change. The most challenging part of counseling is the first step. The first step to counseling is always the hardest. But with an open mind and a dedication to make it work, many couples go on to live successfully and happily in their marriage. And don't forget, all of us has a counselor in Jesus Christ. And I believe that if you spend more time with that counselor, you will spend less time with this counselor. God bless.